Hello, everyone. This is Sonia, and welcome to the Actually You Can show. I am so, so excited today because I have an extremely special guest, somebody who truly lives and embodies the belief that anything is possible. And we are going to talk. He is somebody that had a very famous song, Go Multi-Platinum, and now is having a huge comeback. You might have seen him on the Geico commercial during the Super Bowl. And he is also now an actor, a voiceover artist, a marketing guru, a motivational speaker, and an all-around amazing person. Please give a virtual ovation for DC Lynn. <laughs> Sprinkles! Hey. How y'all doing today? How you doing? I am so excited to have you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. So, you know, you really do have the anything is possible belief. And you've certainly lived it. You've proven it. You've had this huge, huge hit of a song. And, and then you kind of went out of sight for a little while and now you've had a huge comeback and uh, I, I want to hear all about the journey I want to hear about your mindset I want to hear about all of the things that you do but let's start everybody off uh, for the few people who might not know who you are <laughs> how did this all start I mean you were in a suburb in Denver and you became a rapper well something <laughs> like that I was born in Chicago Moved to Denver when I was four years old, and um, I met my partner Steve in high school, right? And he had a band, and I wanted to be in that band. And I also worked down the hall from the choir uh, room, and I wanted to be in the choir. So that really started my musical juices flowing. Mm. And we had our first school dance party, and some of our Steve's friends, you know, they dj and then I wanted to be a DJ. So I'm singing in the choir. They let me in the band. And now I've got two rickety turntables with a Radio Shack mixer. And now I'm trying <laughs> to be a DJ, right? And I'll never get like all the kids in the neighborhood used to be mad at me because I wouldn't come out and play because I was downstairs uh, messing up my father's records trying to DJ, right? So, oh, that's so funny. Fast, yeah, it, 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 it's the truth though. And I knew I wanted to be in music. So fast forward. Uh, when I get to college, you know, the band kind of disbanded because, you know, you, you young kids and you grow apart. And I went to college and Steve went down to Atlanta and, you know, Otis had went to the uh, military because there was three people in tag team. And then when he went to the military, me and Steve stayed as tag team. And then I started writing lyrics in class when I should have been studying. But it got <laughs> so good to me and I was really good at it. And um, I just started making songs. I started DJing. The first party I DJed was a fraternity party. And I bombed. The speakers blew. Uh, I was drinking and picked up the wrong needle off the turntable. And they were all ready to beat me up. But I persevered. Any normal human would have quit. But uh -huh. I didn't quit. I just doubled my efforts and said, you got to get better. And I've always been like that. And... Mm -hmm. I started figuring out how to make songs. I started getting better at DJing. So now I'm doing all the parties. Now I'm making songs. Steve's making songs. We're sending them back and forth to each other. And my senior year, I went to Atlanta for Christmas break. Mm -hmm. And I knew right then I was moving to Atlanta. So I moved to Atlanta and started working at the club's DJ. And mm -hmm. I had actually had a job at CNN, but club was paying so much more and it was just, <laughs> I get paid to party that was, that was my thing back then I get paid to party so why not I'm young I'm having fun and you know fast forward I knew that we couldn't just do hip-hop being in the south because mm -hmm. the south was up-tempo um, bass music right and you know I went to Steve I was like hey man we have to make an up-tempo record and he was like okay he made the beat and I had a stack of rhymes from all the years in college that I was writing lyrics. And one of those songs was, Woomp, there it is. I was trying to match the beats. And I was like, this one will work. Mm -hmm. And everybody thinks it's this big rocket scientist thing where I've got whiteboards and we're trying to figure out formulas <laughs> of how to make the perfect hit record. And it was nothing like that. It was about a song partying on a Friday night. That's wow. all it is, just a song. And... Um, you know, I gave them every major label a chance and they were giving me the runaround and I almost gave up. That's the one time in my life I almost gave up. 
Mm-hmm. And a lady, a young lady was like, DC, you need to talk to Al Bill. Al Bill used to own Stax Records, Mavis Staples, uh, Otis Redding, Isaac Hayes back in the day. And he had had a record the summer before that was a big record. That was a down south record, right? And I called him. I said, all right, I'll try it. I'll call him. And he didn't call me back for a week. And I forgot about it. And <laughs> he finally called me back. And I was like, Mr. Bell, I've got a hit record. I'm in the hottest club in the country. I tested it. You need to sign us, man. Don't play around with me, man. Just, just sign us. And he was like, all right. I was like, wait a minute. Whoa. Really? You haven't even heard the record. <laughs> And I'll never forget the words he told me. He said, brother, I don't have to hear the record. I hear it in your spirit. Let's agree to agree, right? And because I was so passionate about what I do, yeah, he he understood what was that. You know, he understood the stakes. He understood if he, you know, I I, I could feel he has a hit record. I at least want to try. Yeah. And I gave my two weeks at the club, signed a messed up record contract, and a month and a half we were platinum. And wow, what an un Yeah, yeah, I've had a whirlwind story. ever since. And you said we took a little hiatus. We really didn't take a hiatus, but we were our career was stymied because we were in like a 20-year lawsuit, right? Where mm. it was two record companies fighting over the rights. And mm. we're still doing, you know, things are still being done. We're still doing shows. We're still performing. Um, and the record is still surviving because of Elf because of Disney, because of all the movies, and because of all the um, entities, you know, commercials that want to use the record. So mm-hmm. we always get, we always had a royalty check and it was basically like a pension plan. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> we've, we've always been okay. It's, it's basically, the keeps on yeah, giving. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> residuals, right? <laughs> Gotta love residuals. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and, you know, and, and people, people used to say, they're a one hit wonder. I was like, okay, what better hit to have? Yeah. And, 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 and be able to have a living wage for the rest of your life, right? But sure. within that lawsuit, they were trying to kind of take some of that away from us. And, we, and you know, I knew I couldn't fight two record companies, but sure. I just started learning how to do things. I, st- I, I basically became a paralegal. I started gathering all the evidence, all those court cases, organizing wow. them because I knew I would have my day in court. And then I'm back at the club, so I'm DJing at the club. So I'm like, let me get in the corridor. What can I do with the clubs? I'm not just a DJ. I, you have to make yourself invaluable in any job you have. So mm-hmm. I'm the DJ. I'm changing the lights. I'm your sound guy. I'm your marketing. I'm your voiceover for your radio spots. I'm cutting your radio spots. I'm cutting your TV spots. I'm doing everything that, you know, I, I've got six streams of income in one place. That taught me really how to that the most important thing is to have at least six hustles in the hole <laughs> because if if a financial crisis happens or a pandemic happens you one of those hustles can serve you in the short term right yeah and that is how i've always lived so i always have irons in the fire and people will say jack of all trades and master of none it's like yeah until you've lived as long as i have and then some of those trades become masterful right exactly you get some type of mastery in those trades and they serve your overall purpose right so 2012 um was a a a pivotal turning point because you know i got a call at work from the new york times Mm -hmm. and they came and got me on a dj booth i'm like tell them to take a message they're like they want to talk to you they got to talk to you i'm like man went to the front I was like, please call me in the morning at this number. She's like, are you sure? I was like, yes, please. Called me in the morning from the New York Times. She's like, Gawker just made, wrote an article that Barack Obama was in your video. And we went <laughs> to scoop first, right? And I was like, how did you even find me? And she was like, I couldn't find you, but I found you. Wow. And right then I said, that can never happen again because we missed a lot of money on that opportunity. That was an opportunity because the whole world is looking at tag team. Right. Sure. Right. And you that's, need to that's, be yeah. found. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when I started my SEO journey. I said, you better learn how to build websites. You better learn social media. Cause that was that, you know, that's the dawning age of social media. Right. And you better learn SEO, which is search engine optimization. What, in, you know, in short means you type in something in Google and you find it. Right. Yeah. And if you're typing in me, I need to be all on the first page. Back then you type in tag team. It was all wrestling. Right. <laughs> So nobody could find us. So I wow. set off on this journey. 
uh, 2009, I started voiceover because I had been inspired 15 years earlier yeah. by the voices of Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse in the just deep depths of Disney. We did a record called uh-huh. There It Went. And I got to sit and teach Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse how to rap because it was the husband Whoa, and wife team. And that started my cool. voiceover thing. Where I was like, I think I could do animation, right? But back then I didn't know voiceover had different lanes, commercial, animation, right. narration, audio books, uh, promo, uh, video games, you know. Well, so, there you go. So There's your yeah. other six things. Yeah, yeah, your other six things, <laughs> right? Six so, <laughs> so I started training uh, 2009 with Joan Baker and Rudy Gaskins up in New York. And then I would, I would work, fly up to New York and train, fly to L.A. and train with a coach I had in L.A. and come back to Atlanta. I did that for about three years. Wow. And it was difficult because... I didn't know the language, right? I didn't yeah. know the language of acting and voiceover and all those things. And I'm thinking it's the coaches, but that's my hubris because I'm DC, the brand supreme. I could whoop there. There's my way through anything. <laughs> and it wasn't working, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? What's going on? So I stopped going up there and I found a coach in Atlanta and we kept coaching and I was working. I started getting, you know, I worked for Apple radio and got gigs here, got gigs there. Didn't have an agent yet. And then I said, I can't be a 50 year old DJ. So I retired from DJ and I said, voiceover is what I want to do. Hmm. And I just trained and trained for voiceover by about 2016. Uh, here comes the lawsuit because the lawsuit was settled in 2012, but then they kept appealing. Oh my God. And the record company that lost appealed all the way to the Supreme court. Whoa. Could you imagine if the Supreme Court took the case of Whoop, there it is? <laughs> imagine yeah, the press on that. That actually would really be no <laughs> I'd be like, hey, yeah, I made I, it. To yeah, the exactly. Court. Exactly. I made it exactly, exactly. <laughs> but so that was it. And we had to go to court because they were trying to take stuff from us. And because I did all that due diligence and knew exactly how from day one to that day that I had all the paperwork. When I went to the lawyers and, and picked the lawyers I wanted to choose, they they really did a number on them because we were prepared. And that mm-hmm. goes back to preparation, right? So all these little things that I do in my life, have done in my life, have led me to other things, right? right? And, and they're very important in the overall scheme of things. So now I can tell people, this is important, this is important, this is important, because I've been through the ringer, Right. So actually, I want to hear what those things are, because I'm hearing a couple of common threads, especially around mindset and preparation. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've been successful in multiple areas that are virtually, you know, most people would say impossible, what one to 2% of the people succeed at it. Mm -hmm. But you, one, you just, you don't quit. Like that's the persistence. No, no, no. no, no. You've gotten to be a master at whatever you could be a master Mm -hmm. at. Mm -hmm. Uh, You've laid out the groundwork so that you had as many opportunities as possible. So you made yourself invaluable. I hear that too. Mm -hmm. What other mindset tools did you use to make yourself successful? Like, did you, Um, I'm curious actually, because I use visualization a lot and I definitely did when I was acting, you know, I really would mm -hmm. visualize myself succeeding. Did you ever use that or were there other tools that you used? It's amazing. It's amazing you say that because I have always visualized walking up on the Academy Award stage, accepting an Oscar. And I might took up, I took I one acting chill. class. Yeah, I took <laughs> one act, see, you see what I'm saying? I took one acting class in college, and I, but I always had that daydream or that yeah. dream, right? It would just, I'd be, I'd just be daydreaming like, yeah, I'm going to be an actor. Like every time, every year around the Oscars, I'm like, I'm going to be an actor. This is the year I'm going to do it. And I never did it. And I, I, I have no idea why. Well, because I'm in Atlanta and I wasn't in Hollywood, mm-hmm. right? So maybe to, not to like 2008 Atlanta started becoming the scene for acting. Right? right. And I remember that in, I've had opportunities as well. I'm sitting in the office with the president of new line cinema. And he's like, yeah, we, you know, we'll give you a little cast. You give you an audition for, and it was for blade of uh, the Whoa. first blade movie. And it's like, yeah. we're looking at, we're looking at that Wesley Snipes. We're looking at LL Cool J like, and I'm like, all right, whatever, I'm, I'm with it. But I had no idea, right? <laughs> yeah. I had no idea what I was doing, where I right. was sitting, right? So that was an opportunity that went by the wayside. I've had so many opportunities. I was in the Adams family, right? I'm with the director and the producers. We're on the set. I'm sitting with Christina Ritchie, 
Richie, yeah. right? And I have no clues to why I'm there, what I'm doing, right? <laughs> I have no, I have no understanding of what the significance of where I'm at and all the opportunities that I had back then. Yeah. But fast forward to 2016, we got out of the, got out, we, we prevailed on the lawsuit. And as with yeah. any war, you're going to lose a leg, you're going to lose an arm, you're going to mm-hmm. come back with an eye patch, but you're living, yeah. right? Yeah. And I was depressed for about, it was August 2017. I, I slept for a, a whole month, just laid wow. in the bed because I had to figure out what I was going to do. I was like, what are you going to do now that this is over? Right. And I got a call and I booked a voiceover for 10 G's. I said, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and that, about that time, I got, um, my coach was like, people store agency in Atlanta is looking for African-American talent. So I sent them my demo and boom, it was instant. And they were like, wow. man, we love your voice. And then hit the ground running, kept training. I booked them, I booked my first voiceover after about a month. And then I'm up there, you know, just shooting the breeze with them, thanking them. We had to talk about something. Cause I was like, is there more I could do? Well, let me go and be an extra on the set or somewhere. Then the president of the agency came in uh-huh. and she looked at me and I was like, this is DC. And I was like, how you doing, Miss Rebecca? And she's like, I love your face. Put them on camera. Uh-huh. Right. And just uh-huh. like that, I'm an actor. Wow. Just like that. They're like, that never happens. Just like that. I'm in class. Uh, I'm taking headshots. And the first couple classes I took, I was hooked. And <laughs> what I hooked remember- you? I'm curious. What got you into it? What, what did you love about it? Because it was hard. Mm. And I knew it was hard, right? It was difficult. It was uh, acting is one of those things where you're always thinking you're doing it, right? But right. then you get slapped in the face and you realize you're not doing it. You're getting closer, <laughs> but there, it's a lifelong journey, right? So I knew that this was it. This was going because I mean, at that time as well, you know, I, I wanted to start doing shows again. So you asked about mindset, right? And one of the things that I've always done, but didn't do, because right now I have a, a thing called learning how to learn, right? I know. I love that. Tell and, me and yeah, about learning that. how to learn. And yeah. I think it started, you know, because when I wanted to, it really started back when I was young, because people were like, I can't get no job. I can't get no job. And I'd be like, I can get you a job in 10 minutes. <laughs> and and this is back in the day now. So you might be, I used to go to the Yellow Pages mm-hmm. and start calling people in the area and say, how you doing? I was wondering, are you hiring? Can I come fill out an application? No, 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 we're good right now. Yes, just grow just quick. Come on down. Boom. Wow. You got a job. It was that simple, right? But nobody wanted to do it, right? right? Because it was like, no, I want to go drive around and, and waste time. <laughs> when you well, it hit. appears hard. It appears yeah, impossible. Yeah, yeah. But, You're like, if you just take another step, you can actually yes, do yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. So, right. so that's the first thing that started. And then um, when I, you know, early 2000s, I was like, I want to be financially, you know, fiscally responsible, right? And I said, I want to be a broker. I want to do stocks. I want to do this. So I... I, you know, I started trading commodities, passed my series three tests. Then I was like, I want to be a hedge fund. <laughs> and I was like, well, how you be a hedge fund? I was like, well, this, so this is what I do. I, because I'm me, right. Mm-hmm. I can call people up and say, I'm about to put together a hedge fund. I've got some investors. I've got uh, Charles Barkley. I've got Deion Sanders, I've got Michael Jordan. And I think Just you should a have a little take people a, yeah, involved. Yeah, you, you might want to take a meeting with me because I'm DC from the tag team. I made the song, Whoop, there it is. They're like, sure, come on out. So I'm flying all over the country to all these hedge fund managers, right? Mm-hmm. And I get in these big boardrooms and I have no clue what a hedge fund is, right? But <laughs> I make them pitch me while mm. they teach me at the same time. Right. That's how I learn things. You make people pitch you because they're going to pitch you. They're going to be like, well, we can do this for you and this for you and this for you. And then you ask your questions under the guise, you know what you're talking about. Well, well, well why should I let you do that? Because <laughs> from what you're saying, you know, you, you, you hit them like that and then they just keep regurgitating. And there's always going to be one person that is going to just really want to tell you everything that they know. And mm-hmm. you're taking notes and you're, you're like, okay, nice to meet you. And then you go to the next one and the next one and the next one. After about five of these, you're going to know exactly how a hedge fund works. 
Yes. Right. I worked for a broker while I was still DJing, but then I, 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 I saw it through to the end and I realized that it wasn't for me because, you know, being a broker is selling financial services to people that you don't even know what you're selling half the time. And I couldn't, mm -hmm. that my integrity wouldn't allow me to do that. But at the same time, I learned the language. So now I can watch CNBC and make my own decisions. Mm -hmm. And then I got a financial planner and then I let them, I handed the ball off to them. And then I fill little buckets with little bits of money. And over time, you're straight. You, go. you see you what I'm saying? Them. So fast forward to, to the shows. I, I came up with another way to do it. I joined organizations. So every booking agent was like, well, you only got one song. You haven't done nothing in a long time. I was like, we got one. There it is, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, but I was like, all right, cool. I go and join an organization called International Entertainment Buyers Association. Every profession has an organization or a society, right? Mm -hmm. Or several. And you join, you pay your dues, and everybody in there has been in the game 20, 30, 40 years. This organization was the buyers. There's a tier. You got your buyers. Those are the people who are going to put on the concerts and put on the tours. They're mm -hmm. the money people. Then you have your venues, the stadiums, the arenas, the hard rock cafes, the places like that. Then you have your top tier promoters, which is Live Nation, uh, I, 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 I radio, uh, any, any big promoter that can, you know, CSS, all the big talent agencies, right. then you have your mom and pop promoters, then you have your managers, then there's me. And I cut out the middle because I'm straight to, the top. straight to the buyer and I'm in the convention, me and Chubby Checker, the only black dudes in there out of 5,000 <laughs> people. And I got a big wound there, this t-shirt on, I'm passing out cars. You know, we have a wow. team. I'm DC Tag Team. We have a clean 90s nostalgia show. If you're ever interested, need a little variety in your show, here's my card. All of a sudden, we went from doing five shows a year to doing 30. Wow. And then 30 shows a year to doing 40. We got on tour, and then everybody started realizing, you know, and it was all because I didn't give up. I didn't take no for an answer. I was like, okay. Thank you. So I want to, a lot of people ask me, you know, especially as a coach or they'll come to me because mm -hmm. they're, they're afraid of that very thing, that taking that chance them putting themselves out there that no, the no, the no. How, what do you say to people like that? How do you, how did you get past it? What did you do? How do you get beyond the fear of doing something you never did before <laughs> and taking your chances that everybody's going to say no? You don't. You never do. You never but, get over the fear. Yeah. But, but over the years, I've acquired the ability to take negative emotions, put them in my pocket, and use them as fuel for later. Mm. Use them as positivity. Because I, you know, I think the problem is that when people make a choice, they expect something in return. They see it as a quid pro quo on anything or any move they make in life. Mm. When it's not about that. It's about playing offense, yeah. right? You're not, if you're shoot, if you're an incredible offensive player, you're not thinking about defense. <laughs> you're, thinking, <laughs> you're thinking about how to score. And you're going to, even if you have a drop, you're going to shoot a hundred times and you're right. going to, you're going to work your way out of it. And then you're going to get hot. And then when you get hot and you stay hot for a certain amount of time, then you get the big contract and you keep going. Right. Yeah. So you have to do it like that. You can't, you can't expect things. You got to just do it. And, you know, uh -huh. this is my analogy because we do not, if you're, if you plant a garden, right, do you plant a seed, then sit down and cross your legs and be like, okay, seed, grow, <laughs> grow seed. Why aren't you growing seed? The seed's not growing. I quit. Right. It's like, right. you can't do that. No. You have to, you have to plant the seed. You come back to it later. It's a sprout. Right. Come back to it later. It's a bush. All my life, I planted seeds, whether I knew it or didn't. Mm -hmm. And especially recently, the better I get, more seeds are planted. And because I've done that all my life, now I'm standing in a forest of opportunity. That's right? so great. And you never know how long that, that, that seed is going to take to grow. Right. right. So you just do it. Throw it out there. And, you, you know, you got to nurture it. But... Sometimes you don't. There are seeds that I drop that are coming back to help me. That's all. That's the whole jack of all trades. That doesn't apply to me because I everything is relative. Yeah. I'm my own. You know, I'm I do everything. And then 
you can't do everything. Yeah, but you can learn everything. You learn everything. Then you can teach somebody who's willing to learn it. Now you're building a team, right? You know, when I hear you talk, I think about there's a, the thing about hope and, mm-hmm. and everybody needs hope and, and, mm-hmm. and hope actually is the basis of resilience. And uh, the scientists have determined that really what creates hope is willpower, which we know, but mm-hmm. way power. And I mm-hmm. think people often forget about the way power. And that's the how many different ways can you go about trying to get the thing. And the more ways you have, the more hope you have. Well, yeah, Mar- there's I, always a possibility. I don't fear anything. So, like, <laughs> perfectly. Now we're doing shows, right? Right. 2017, you know, I'm building the website. I'm getting better at SEO. But it's difficult. It's a challenge. Challenge. You know, and it might take me two weeks to do one little thing, but I don't quit because I know I'm going to overcome it. Right. Yeah. So now I'm acting. Right. And I know. that's where I want to go to. So yeah, let's I'm talk acting, about I'm acting. Having fun. <laughs> I'm acting. I'm in class every day and I'm going hard because I'm in class every day. Mm-hmm. I go to every intensive on the weekend, every workshop on the weekends. And sometimes, sometimes I go, I'm in class three, four times a day. I might get up morning, do 11 o'clock, and then go to the class at 3, and then go to class at 7. Wow. There was a couple of times I did that because I had three different Meisner coaches, right? And they all, ah, that's and they I all started, said, yeah, they all said, oh, I used to know Meisner. I've been trained by Meisner. But they all taught it differently, but they all were correct yeah. in how they taught it. I, I gained something from all of them, mm-hmm. right? So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the glass half full as opposed to half empty because a lot of people had the same attitude I had with voiceover back in the day. I just think you could, it's supposed to just work, right? This teacher doesn't know what they're doing. No, that teacher has been through this game. They can, you got to listen, listen mm-hmm. to what they're saying. And the biggest problem I had at the beginning was Natalia Livingston. That was one of my coaches. She said, DC, you're too happy. You look like you're happy to be acting. What does this scene call for? And I was like, uh, drama. Okay. <laughs> well, why are you smiling? She's like, I know you're happy to be acting. Right. But then that's when I learned about moment before. Yeah. These little bitty things that you take for granted. You, you start picking up. Right. One thing I went to an intensive, not intensive, but a workshop with a casting director. I said, please tell me how the whole cast game works from top to bottom. And he told me. And then that changed everything for me. Cause I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and, and he explained it, you know, he explained that you've got the producer then the producer picks the casting director and the casting director looks at a bunch of pictures and then the pictures come back. Then he picks maybe a hundred. You might've been going against 3000 people, but you got the look. Then they run through those They run through the audition. Then he gives them to the producer and the director. Then they whittle it down. And then there's three. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then I know when I yeah, got, yeah. Then you're gonna get light, a I was yeah. up against 6,000 people. Yeah, exactly, I was exactly, like, exactly. exactly. Them, right? So for you to be in three and you right. to be first refusal or what's your avail, right? What's your avail is like, okay, we just want to know that if we do pick you, you can do this. Yeah. First refusal is we want you to hold this time. So if we don't want to use you, Right. <laughs> we, right, we no. don't have to. We just right? want to make sure that we book you. We we've just got make you. Sure that you, you don't have us. You're sitting around doing nothing to miss another opportunity while we <laughs> while we decide right? while we don't communicate with you or anything. Just figure out how what we want to do and don't even don't give you a follow up calls as well. So that's our work. I'm at that point now. Yeah. Right. It took me three. It took me two and a half years to get to that point. That's, right. So because I, I I I learned how to learn. I, instead of just going to class, I go to class half hour earlier, talk to the coach and to talk to the teacher. I help the teacher set up the lights, set up the cameras. If a, a teacher come, if a good big time lady, you know, Crystal Carson from LA, she's my, one of my best coaches. I shot her whole intensive for a whole weekend, 16 hours straight, three cameras set up. Didn't know what I was doing, but I just, just did it because I knew that all, she knows every casting director in the city. And they were all up on that stage and I'm shooting them and I'm getting all this knowledge from these, these casting directors and they're seeing me shoot and then they know who I am because I'm coordinated everything. See, yeah. learn how to learn. That's, and BC, this is whole, going yeah, back BC. to your whole BC. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, got, you <laughs> have to, let, so people, cool. you have to no. let people see you hustle, right? Yeah. Like I learned early, don't ask your agent for anything, Yeah. right? People always, why am I, Big, big one down here. Why did I get cast for Black Panther 2? Why am I not this? Why am I not that? And the only thing I do is I say thank you. But I let them know 
that I'm in this class, this class, this class, or I'll call them and ask them, what classes you hear is good? Mm. Like, well, we like this class. Well, I'm like, well, I'm in this class, 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 this intensive, this intensive, this workshop, this class, and this class. They're like, DC, you're doing all that? (laughs) Yeah, I'm serious about this. Yeah. You create your own narrative and then they buy into it and then they work harder for you. I didn't even have to ask. All I, I, I asked for something that they were willing to give me. Which right? is so great. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's not reverse psychology either. It's just a way to approach people because well, if everybody else. And it actually else is, was how you got, got your first record, right? The passion, that the passion. showing. Yeah, yeah. You, gotta show, you gotta show that. You gotta show that. You gotta show that. And that just people want that. I think mm-hmm. that we're, we're attracted to yeah, that. Yeah. So you shared with me because you're normal and human. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that you get nervous for auditions too. Oh yeah. But you also, um, you have a special tactic that you and I share for memorizing lines. And I oh, would yeah. love, love, love to talk about that. So, so what do you do? So when I first started, every coach has their, you know, every coach has their way of telling you how to memorize lines and really you're never supposed to memorize lines because when you memorize lines, you're stuck in one thing. Mm-hmm. And if it's, they flip it on you, then you, you haven't prepared. You, yeah. you, you're, just, you're just memorizing words and you're just saying words. You, ha- you don't even know what the scene is about because you're yeah. trying to memorize a line. So now what I do is I, I've done all the worksheets, right? You have, the work, you have a 14-page worksheet. You have a two-page worksheet. I filled them all out, right? Mm-hmm. But I take the best things that help me from all these different worksheets, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like placing yourself, if it's Meisner, it's going to be one thing. If it's, um, uh, you know, Uta Hagen, it's going to be another thing. If it's, um, you know, method acting, it's going to be, you got to totally go back and you got to feel, you got to find a place where you were at and, and right. you, you got to place yourself, right? So I take the, the things that I can relate to with all these things. And then that's my process as I go to the gym and then you go to the gym. And I go to the gym, that. right? So I go to the gym and I'll, I, you know, before I even get to the gym, I'm already looking at the, you know, the first script. I got the, probably half the script down because when I do the, when I look at the lines, I'm doing it word by word, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, I think you are going to, because that's the only way that you can do it when you are working out. Like right. I'll be on bench press and I, every word is a rep. Uh-huh. I think you are beautiful. <laughs> but in my mind, because you're going so slow, you're, 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 you're playing, you're imagining, yeah. you're hashing things out. You're like, what can I do that I used to be this? You know, a lot of times, first thing I, I do sometimes is I'll do a voiceover of the whole script, notes and all, mm-hmm. numbers on the corners, everything. <laughs> and just and just do, and, and practice voiceover yeah. and, do, and do the whole script by the time I finish recording it and cutting it up and making it nice so I can listen to it again I never listened to it again because I already know everything because I right. sat there and hashed it out in a different form that wasn't in my head I yep. wasn't trying to memorize it I was trying to just read it out loud or right. if I can take all the watermarks off the the pdf <laughs> I'll, I'll take all I'll take all of the text throw it in the AI software and now the script is being read to me while I'm checking emails, doing this, retouching pictures, whatever. So you're and tapping pieces, all the different brain Yeah, you're tapping little, little things are starting to, because sometimes it takes that. We learn different ways. That, yeah. I, just gave you, I just gave you seven different ways to learn your lines in a script. It don't matter if it's one line or 10 pages. Right. But the gym is the best way for me because I know that I'm getting a great workout. Yep. And I know when I walk out of there, I, I I don't know the lines, but I know what the script is about. Absolutely. And when you know what the script is about, you it, it comes naturally. Plus some other techniques that... Plus we also know, though, for, with movement, is that your brain yeah. is wide open. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's You're one of the open. things that I teach with motor yeah. size is that your brain, you can remember things. It, it, mm-hmm. it hits the memory center. You're more yeah. creative. Yeah. So it opens up those creative uh, places, those juices in your brain. And mm-hmm. it's also just, it's, it's fun. And you're, you're just very receptive to it. So yep. you learn better, we'll, you create more, yeah. you got it. And, then, and, then, and you feel better, confident. Feel better. I come back home, take a shower, and then I get on my site with my, this is, this is, because of the pandemic, everybody was forced to step up their Zoom game, right? Your Zoom yeah. game better be good or you're not going to make money. So I've got a real, I've got a, I've, I've spent a lot of time putting together audition rig. One of my biggest weaknesses that I, sometimes I couldn't do auditions because I didn't have a reader. 
right? Mm, and I would right. go to some, and then I'll go to a house, you know, reading houses where they, you know, they train you and be like, okay, it's going to be $75 for a half hour. And then you go and you're nervous and they're not helping and what's well, going to be extra for coaching. And, you know, right. it's like, that was just, it just, you just doesn't bode well for a good audition. But now, uh, 2018, this site started called We Audition. And it's basically, you know, acting Zoom. Yeah, and there idea. are people, and if you, you know, at first it was kind of janky, but once the pandemic hit, maybe like the last six months, they really stepped it up, and it's beautiful because everything is in the platform. Yeah. You don't have to use a separate software to record it. You don't have it's it's in there. It holds the takes. You have readers on the other side, and you got to think about it. L.A. shut down. New York is shut down. Right. Like everybody shut down, can't make movies, but Atlanta, we wide open. We there's places where everybody shoot doing auditions, getting ready for when it when it's over. Yeah. So now I'm tra- I'm putting in the reps with soap opera actors from LA, movie actresses from LA, series regulars from LA, Broadway actresses from New York. That's you know amazing. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Coaches. Uh, I got people in London, Australia. I'm learning from British, I'm learning from classically trained actors in Europe. I can't use them for auditions because of the, you know, because of the accent. Yeah, the accent. But I can rehearse with them and learn things from them. And they, I tell them things, they tell me things and we start, you know, and then it's gotten to the point now where I'll pay for people in LA and New York where the good acting schools are. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm gonna pay for you to take that class and you take yeah. it in and you, when we're reading, teach me, right? Okay. The things that you learn that you see I'm doing, you see the little quirks, iron out my issues Uh that way. Right. So now I'm investing in myself. I'm investing in the other person. I've got a, I've got a team of readers where I can audition all day. If I want to, I can start from seven o'clock in the morning and go, if I get 10 pages, I might audition four times a day till I I do do the audition because that's the fun part. By the second time, they're like, are you recording this? I'm like, no, like you're going to record this. (laughs) There have been times, I can tell you, this last thing I booked, I just booked a yeah. TV series. One of my actors, Keisha, Keisha Thompson. I was like, man, Keisha, they just sent me this thing at 12 o'clock. It got to be at 5. Man, I don't feel like doing this. She's like, boy, you better do that audition. And I was like, man. She's like, come on, let's go. And I was like, all right. And I booked it. The See, audition I wasn't going to do, I booked it. So tell That's me more right. about that. So, cause you, you obviously you come across so positive and so mm-hmm. like, you're just so curious and learning and you're always asking really great questions. Another tactic that mm-hmm. I think is so powerful with mindset, but you have days, right? You're oh, normal. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, there are days yeah, where you're like, I just don't feel like doing it. And they yeah. do in acting. They'll spring these things on you. Like, Hey, mm-hmm. we need this an hour. Right. And you're like, yeah. okay, brilliant now. Um, so what do you do? How do you get yourself up? Or what, how, what would you say to somebody that perhaps has that problem? There is. How do you, how do you go on days when you just don't want to go? Just listen how you ask that question, right? That is what you're feeling on the reverse end, right? But the answer is simple. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. You do it. You, you can cuss and cuss and swear while you're doing it. Just do it. Think about how many times. Have you, man, I don't want to go to the gym. Man, just get up and go to the gym. All right, I'm going to go to the gym. You go to the gym, you get to the gym. You're like, all right, I'm here. I'm going to just do lightweight today. You're like, all right, I'm feeling kind of good now. Hey. <laughs> right. I don't worked out for an hour. And then you're, you're going home and you sweat, you do worked out. And how many times you say to yourself, man, I'm glad I went to the gym today. Yeah. Right? That's the power of just doing it. Don't yeah. think about it. Just do it. I said all the time. I was at the club. Like, I want people to party. I want people to have a good time. Like, don't think about it. Just do it. Yeah. It's nothing to think about. Just do it. And when you do, I do this, I do this constantly every day. I'm lazy in my in my heart, but I'm not gonna be lazy <laughs> yeah, when it comes to lazy. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, I'm lazy in my heart, my mind. I could lay around all day if I wanted to, but I know I'm I'm dead wrong. Right. Because I and, and there's a lot of things I don't want to do, but I do it anyway. And when it serves you and you understand it serves you, then it becomes second hat. You know, there are, there are times where things don't go, but it gets better and better and better, especially now I've got my rig up. There's no reason for me to not ever audition or ever, um, ever rehearse. 
because I've got a team of 10 to 15 people that I can go to 24 hours a day and say, let's rehearse. Can you imagine having a gym that you could go do or, or like a, like a spin class where all you're doing is acting? Right. That's what yeah, I have. Absolutely. And yeah. I get on these clubhouses and people are like, so is the, if the director likes my hair blonde and he doesn't give me the job because my hair is brown, <laughs> is that, what should I do? And I'm like, just sitting there like, I can't, I, got, I can't be on this clubhouse because right. everybody's missing the point. They're asking the same dumb questions I used to ask three years ago, right? But it's a process. Sometimes I can't, yeah, it's a process. And sometimes, and then, and then what I'll do, you know, what you think about that, DC? I was like, you don't want to know what I think. But <laughs> I'm going to tell you that all y'all missing the point. Y'all asked the wrong question. Yes. You know, the question is, are, why aren't you training? Right. The and camp another class. Thing- yeah. How can you, know, you why do aren't more? You training? Yeah, right? How can you do better. more? Right. That's that. You're not going to get better by changing your hair brown. You're going to get better by putting in reps, acting with other actors, or you acting with a coach. Said, you also said earlier, though, and I do really love and appreciate that because I kind of had my own LA story about being different. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember when I first got to LA, I was all about like you'd walk into a room, you'd see a hundred stunning women you're like oh but you kind of there was this part of you that wanted to be like them and I remember at the time there was like the white blouse the faded jeans and white cowboy boots sounds like Mm. a horrible outfit but that was the outfit (laughs) and all I wanted was that outfit and I was walking down the street and in it was uh Beverly Hills. And I passed by five girls wearing the exact same outfit, you know, not exact, but basically the exact. And I thought, wow, I'm finally like everybody else. And now I'm like everybody else. And exactly. that was the moment where I was hey, like, I like need it, to you? be different. Hey, <laughs> hey, let me tell you, I knew coming in, the first thing I did coming in, I said, okay, the reason they like me is because this beard. I normally wouldn't be wearing this beard, but this books me. This is what they want, right? right? This is what this is my lane. So that's fine, right? And I know, I, first thing I did is I said, let me go find all the agencies in Atlanta and find everybody that looks like me. Let me mm-hmm. see who, it, I'm not, not necessarily who my competition is, but who looks like me. Like I tell people, I was like, when they say, well, how do I get an agent? First thing you do is you go to every agent website and see if they, how many of of you do they have? If they have four or five of you, you, it's going to be hard. But if there's no you, that's where you, that's where you plant your flag because they know what they have and what they don't. Right. Mm -hmm. So I know, I knew all the guys that I was going to be up against. I made a reel, my own reel, went to all their little clips, made reel and had my own reel of all the guys that I was up against that I knew I'd be in a room with. Yeah. Then I didn't necessarily study them. I just wanted to know who they were. And when I looked at their resumes, I knew I had work to do because I'm going, I've been in here a year and these cats have been doing it for 30 years, Mm -hmm. right? So you got work to do, DC. And that's what gave me the fuel because I understood how difficult it was going to be. I understood how challenging it was going to be. But I also knew that everybody's success story is different, right? Yeah. And, and and, And the thing that made makes everybody an actor is they don't quit. If you don't quit, if you don't quit, you'll, you'll be an actor. Now, (laughs) depending on, you know, there's levels, but if you don't quit, you can be a working actor. If you quit, if you don't quit and you really pay attention and try to gain some type of mastery and listen to, and, and just be a student and learn how to learn, you will be an actor. But People and I quit. think that's true in all things. Not in all things. It, but, in but, all but, things. Anything but, but in you're really but, going after. But it varies. Yeah, yeah. But in acting, there. but just like SEO, SEO is probably more difficult than acting, right? Right now, music production is more difficult than acting and all of it because I used to do it. But <laughs> my creativity is off the charts, but technology has to meet creativity for me to be able to do anything in music production. Right. And what I want to do is something different than what I did back then. I want to do jingles. I want to, so now I got to take music there. I got to know how music works. I want to do jingles. I want to do, if I'm auditioning for a Christmas, I auditioned for a Christmas show, a Christmas movie a month ago. <laughs> now imagine if I had a song, a Christmas song ready to submit. Yeah. I tell my agents, hey, submit this song along, find the music producer, the music director and see if they might want to use this. 
Yeah. And then I'm in the movie. Prepared. You know, like there's, you're just you're prepared. There, there's yeah, so many ways. There's Keep so many learning. different ways that you can change the game for yourself. Yeah. And they might not use you that time. See, everybody's worried about failure. It's not failure. It's mm-hmm. just you threw it out there, but you didn't fail. He remembers right. you. He remembers you did that. Just yeah. because he don't pick you now don't mean he's not going to pick you later. Or they exactly. or so many times that so happens. many times. So you can never, you got to get out of your head on the emotion part. And you got to take that, put it in your pocket and use it in auditions. That's what mm-hmm. I do. My father died a year ago and it was mm-hmm. glorious, right? Now I miss my father. I'm sad sometimes, but I will put it in my, my pocket and I will take it out and I will use it when I need it. I get <laughs> mad all the time, yeah. but I don't react. I don't let people see me sweat. But when I need it, I'll pull it out of my pocket and that's my fuel to get through this hard thing I'm doing today or right. get through this, what I'm trying to do, or just get up to go to the gym. You, you well, There's so many things. I've heard so many coaches say, use it, use it. Right. So true. But in acting, but you could use it in life. You could take any, you could take envy. If you're jealous of somebody because they got a coat that you want, well, use it. Mm-hmm. Be like, okay, you know what, what I got to do to get that coat. All right. So today. We're going to just spend all day learning one thing to get you closer to getting that coat. If that's what you want. Right. Right. But I use it for different. I lost a hundred pounds. Right. Because I had, I had back issues. Right. I basically walked around a broken back two years ago and I was three fifty and got down to two sixty because somebody was shooting me on a Facebook, (laughs) on Facebook at a show where I had all kinds of girdles on and fat (laughs) hanging all over the girdles. And I saw that and I'm like, that's it. I'm done. I mean, I was so embarrassed and I was so shamed that I used it. And I was like, okay, well, you know, let me find a doctor. Hey, doc, I need a pill. I need a weight loss pill. It's like, I'm not doing that. It's like, we're mm-hmm. going to do keto, but I'm not going to see you for two weeks. I was like, okay. I went and found out everything about keto for one day, sucked it in. And when I finally got to the doctor, I had lost 15 pounds. Wow. And just... That's so you can great. do anything like that you, you want to do doing that. You really, I, I, I'm yeah. so impressed and I think so inspired because what I hear over and over in every part of your life is that you decide you have some vision, some thought, something you want, and you decide that's what you're going to do. You keep asking the questions of what do I need to do in order mm-hmm. to achieve that? And mm-hmm. you are relentless in learning it and finding it and getting it. And it's just, it's so brilliant and hey. so inspiring. If there were any final words that you would give to anyone about, who wanted to either be an actor or a musician or just anything else in their life, what, what would you say to inspire them to move forward? Easiest way is figure out what you want to do. Then call every organization out there and just start talking to people. You don't even got to be, be a, a member. Just call people and ask them what the organization be, – be an innocent child. And call and say, I don't know what this is, but I think I want to, I want to join. What, what are you guys about? Cause I think I want to be an actor. So can you tell me more about your organization? And they're going to spill everything to you. You do that with 10 organizations, you will have a better understanding and then you will kind of know what to do. They're going to introduce you to some people. Those people are going to say, well, first thing you want to do is you want to start here. You want to do here. And yeah. you're going to, you're going to, you're going to build your ground, your ground, you know, your, your infrastructure, and you're going to plant that one seed. Yeah. And then you leave it alone and you come back next week and water it. And then you leave it alone and you keep nurturing it, nurturing it, pruning it. And you can have a whole garden. You, you, or you a have forest. A garden. If you have a like garden, you, you don't do. have one plant. <laughs> if you don't have a garden. You don't have one plant. You have some metrical rows of different things that serve you. Yeah. Here's for the carrots. These are for this. This is for that. These are for the tomatoes. This is for the corn. They all look different, but they all feed you. Absolutely. So, so don't give up. Don't give up. That's your that's vision now. Too. Where are we going to see? Where are we going to see DC? Glenn next. It's funny because my agent was like, what do you want to do, DC? I was like, you guys do a great job for me. DC, what do you want to do? It's like, hey, man, I'm humble. Blah, 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 blah. DC, what's your bucket list? I'm like, oh, bucket list. Uh-huh. You know what? I want to be in The Mandalorian. I, I want to be in Star Wars. I'm, I'm going to tell John Favreau and Dave Leone, y'all need to mess with me because I got talent and I will make you proud. So if you're listening, holler at me. 
For real. <laughs> and okay. you know, why am I in Atlanta? I'm not in any Marvel movies. You know what? I want to, I want five lines with the rock. I want to be in big movies, little parts and big movies. That's what All I want. Right. And that's okay. what we're working toward. And that's and what you're going to see. No me. doubt. We are going to see that. And I'm going to be cheering you when you walk up those steps to catch your Oscar too. <laughs> You know, a friend of mine once said, sometimes you got to let go of what you think you're supposed to do in order to get what you're meant to do. And maybe all of the, you know, the rap, the song, everything was all building for your big, hey, big moment. You but it's start, all been an incredible ride. You get one life. You know what I mean? Live it to the fullest and do everything. Don't leave this earth wishing you had done something. Uh, love, love, love that. Mm -hmm. So how can we find you? How can, because we want you to be seen. <laughs> You've right, got so, so many words of wisdom and you're talented. How can we find you? All my social networks are DC Glenn ATL. That's the SEO thing. You want to be symmetrical across the board. Another little, another little uh, tidbit. DC Glenn, okay. DC Glenn ATL or Tag Team Woo. But because I do SEO and I lay good breadcrumbs, you can type in anything about me. My name, you can type in tag team. You can type in Woomp, there it is. You can type in Scoop, there it is. You can type in Spinning Scoop, French Vanilla, Rocky Road, Road whatever. You're yeah. going to find me, right? You're going to find yeah. me. And I'm willing to help people because I give what I want first. And all I'm trying to do is talk to people and tell them the things that I wish somebody had told me when I was a young man to maybe make my life a little easier, my path a little better. But if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't do it any different. So amazing That's how I am. Mm -hmm. you're so great thank you. thank you and for anybody else watching you can so go check out out dc glenn atl or at sonia satra um we're both here to share our mindset tools to share the belief and to really truly inspire that anything is possible and you've given us so much inspiration and so many great words of wisdom to really um follow so i can't thank oh, you enough and yeah. one more thing sprinkles sprinkles oh, <laughs>